Lesson 8, Creating a Logical Standby Database So far, we discussed about physical standby database. In this lesson, we're going to focus on how to create logical standby database. I will divide this lesson into two sections. The first section will be overview, which includes the architecture of a logical standby database and also preparation. The second part of this lesson will be creation of a logical standby database and also additional tasks. At the end, I will also show you a short demonstration. After completing this lesson, you should be able to determine when to create a logical standby database and also you should be able to create a logical standby database. And also, you should be able to filter uh, changes based on uh, your requirement. What is the benefit of implementing logical standby data database? Just like a physical standby database, you can run reporting query in the logical standby database. But if you want to achieve real-time reporting, then physical standby database with the active data guard real-time query can give you a better benefit. But uh, physical standby database is a read-only mode. So we have to open physical standby database read-only. But suppose that uh, you want to create report and in order to improve a report, I want to create uh, additional objects in the standby database. For example, I want to create index, I want to create much larger view to optimally run my reporting queries. Then logical standby database can give you better benefit as well because you know a physical standby database we cannot uh, we cannot uh, create additional objects directly in the physical standby database so you may want to create uh, indexes and much larger views in the logical standby database because that's a supported operation and logical standby database is an independent database from primary database so DB name, DB underscore name is different. And also it has its own online redo log file along with the standby log file. So logical standby database, it receives the redo from primary database to keep all the changes from shared objects in the primary database. But also you can make uh, additional changes independently in the logical standby database. And also, uh, it can uh, provide a data protection. If a logical standby database is the only standby database, uh, you can choose a logical standby database in case of a, a digester scenario. Uh, however, uh, if you have uh, logical and physical standby databases in the data guard configuration, then it's a good idea to choose up to current uh, physical standby database instead of a logical standby database. It's because when you uh, switch over or fail over to logical standby database, all of a physical standby database must be recreated based on new primary database, which was a logical standby database. That's one consideration. Uh, these days, um, I can see that uh, I see logical standby database more and more cases uh, to support rolling database upgrade. If you want to upgrade your database, but your downtime requirement uh, 
is set to very minimal. Let's say I need a 30 minute downtime during the database upgrade. And also one hour in a downtime. So if you are using a logical standby database, we can perform rolling database upgrade. So we can actually reduce uh, downtime by using a logical standby database. I think you know, that's a more huge case these days because many customers use Active Data Guard for reporting and logical standby database used to be used for reporting in many times but now logical standby database is used for rolling database upgrade more and more. Okay, so this diagram is giving you logical standby database SQL apply architecture. Uh, in the data guard configuration in the diagram, we have a primary database and users connect to primary database to make changes and changes are replicated to uh, the logical standby database. So these changes uh, you know, nothing more than redo. So redo is automatically transported to standby database. Uh, I think in, uh, don't be confused on this in you know, uh, this piece and this text transform redo information into SQL. Uh, actually transformation of a SQL information is done in the logical standby database not in the primary database or during the uh, redo transport service. It's your only logical standby database. So uh, once the redo is delivered to logical standby database and SQL apply service transform redo into SQL statement. Uh, unlike um, media recovery process, which is uh, redo apply service, SQL apply service is composed of a many number of uh, processes and those processes work together uh, to, to process redo and to convert redo into SQL and to apply redo to, uh, to, uh, to apply uh, SQL statement to recover logical standby database. <laughs> So this slide is giving you a little more detail. So here we have a redo data from primary database. So which file stores redo data from primary database? That's a standby log file in the logical standby database. So since the redo coming from primary database is reside in a standby log file, then we have to process this. The reason is your logical standby database physical structure is not same as primary database structure. We cannot apply redo directly to recover logical standby database because the redo describes the changes in the specific block, in the specific file, in the specific database. However, what if a block location is different and file number is different? Then there's no way to apply redo. So what a SQL apply does, we use reader process. So log mining process. It access to standby log file and extract standby log file and all scanned redo entries passed over to prepare a process. And prepare a process, it does a lot of work. It will uh, scan uh, all the, you know, uh, the redo entries passed by reader process. And also it filters, uh, it filters the redo entries. And also, it convert redo entries into LCR. LCR is a logical change record. Think about that. 
you issue the one update statement in the primary database. If that updated the one row, then that is uh, the representation of a one row, and there will be one LCR, one logical change record. However, if a one update statement updated thousand rows, then you will have thousand LCRs. So one LCR, it describes what it represents, one row change. So that's what you have to know. So builder process, uh, this builder process, it is responsible to group all associated LCRs. For example, I issued a one uh, update statement and that modified the thousand rows. Then we have to combine thousand LCRs to create one transaction. So that's by builder process. And then this builder process, it will uh, share uh, tr uh, the transaction with the analyzer. And this analyzer must check dependencies among the transactions. So which transaction must be executed first? Which transaction must be executed next? So this coordinator, it will assign transaction to the each applier process. Applier process is responsible to apply SQL statement. And coordinator, it is uh, LSP process. Now throughout this process, uh, prepare process and apply process, these two process types work more than the other processes. So we can actually start prepare a process and apply a process in parallel. So later on, I think in a, that, that's a lesson 13, uh, in lesson 13 we will see which circumstance we should start more prepare processes, more apply processes. Well, which circumstances we have to reduce number of uh, prepare processes and apply processes. Okay, so that's in a simple architecture information. So now preparation. Uh, to prepare to create logical standby database, we will have to check a couple of things. Number one, check for unsupported objects. Whenever the database is replicated at the logical level, you know, uh, there may be, uh, you know, multiple unsupported objects. So we have to identify those objects. We have to manage unsupported objects manually. Like, a, uh, you know, other replication solutions like Oracle Golden Gate and also logical standby database. In old days, Oracle Streams. And also, even before that, advanced replication solution. All these technologies that replicate data at the logical level uh, had uh, uh, unsupported objects. So we have, we have to identify unsupported objects, and then we have to handle these objects before creating logical standby database. And also, we have, a, uh, we have to check unsupported DDL command. So we will have to know uh, the unsupported DDL command and also ensure row uniqueness. Now, LCR, logical change record, that was uh, uh, you know, created from one video entry. This you know, LCR must update one row uniquely. If one LCR modifies more than one row, then that's a violation. So that will be excluded. So in the logical standby database, we have to wait to apply you know, LCRs uniquely. To do so, tables uh, should have a unique key or primary key. Sometimes there may be application 
uh, that doesn't allow you know, primary key constraint or unique key constraint. If that is the case, at least you have to create uh, the constraint, but you just simply disable. But you can add the rely option. So that will be used by logical standby database. You create constraint, but disable the constraint, but with a rely option. So we have that option as well. And also we have to verify that the primary database is configured for archive log mode. So that's actually another thing what we have to check. Unsupported objects. User tables placed in internal schemas will not be maintained. And also, log apply service automatically exclude, uh, exclude unsupported objects when applying redo data to the logical standby database. So here are the unsupported objects, tables, and sequences in the sys schema and also tables used to support much larger views and global temporary table and tables with unsupported data type. So let's take a look at unsupported data types. Uh, log apply services automatically exclude entire tables with unsupported data types when applying redo data to the logical standby database. So here are the you know, unsupported data types. If you have any tables with these unsupported data types, then those objects will be excluded. B file, row ID, you uh, row ID collections, objects with the nested tables, and also uh, special types. Uh, there are several views available uh, that can give us uh, internal schemas or unsupported uh, uh, data types and unsupported tables. Especially uh, if you want to, uh, if you want to identify. Uh, internal schemas uh, that will be skipped in the logical standby database. You can use a uh, DBA uh, logical standby skip view. Uh, if your environment multi-tenant environment, then you can use a CD, uh, uh, CDB logical standby skip and the statement option internal schema. Then you will see list of uh, unsupported uh, the objects, actually unsupported schemas, which, which are the internal schemas. So that's what you're going to see. And checking for unsupported uh, tables. From DBA or CDB logical standby unsupported, and you will see tables that include, uh, that include unsupported data types. So in which schema, in which table you have unsupported data type, does these tables identified are unsupported. So you can also view uh, DBA logical standby unsupported to check this information. So let's take a look at you know, uh, the unsupported uh, table with a column that includes unsupported data type. So we have, uh, uh, we are looking at OE schema in this example. In the OE schema, I have a customer's table. It includes very data type. And this was used for column name, phone numbers. So this will be sk uh, skipped. And also we have a purchase order and we have unsupported data type. And this will be skipped in the logical standby database. So you will have to, uh, you will have to check all this uh, uh, clearly uh, before creating a logical standby database. Uh, here are the SQL commands that do not execute on the standby database. We have alter database, alter materialized views, 
and also explain command, set row command, set transaction command, and definitely you will have to review the complete list of SQL command that will not be in a, uh, supported and that will not be executed on the standby database. And also we have unsupported PL SQL supply the packages, so which include the DBMS Java, DBMS Registry, DBMS Alert, and also DBMS Refresh, and DBMS AQ. And these packages only support it in the context of rolling upgrade. So if you want to see the packages uh, supported uh, during the rolling database upgrade, you can use select owner package name from DBA logical standby PL SQL support where support level DBMS rolling. So some of you know, our packages are supported in the context of a rolling database upgrade. So let's take a look at uh, the way to check uh, unique row identifiers. Uh, we can use you know, DBA logical standby not unique uh, this view and this view, this view will display a table that doesn't guarantee uniqueness. So when you're looking at a bad column, yes, there is a bad column. So meaning that uh, when you make any changes to this table and redo is generated and redo convert it to LCR, but LCR may not be able to identify unique associated row in this logical standby database. The case where table doesn't have a primary key or unique key. So in that case, we have to handle this uniqueness issue because if LCR attempt to change more than one rows, then uh, logical standby database process simply ignore this LCR. So we have a one option. The one option is, why don't you add primary key if a primary key doesn't exist? However, disable it. Okay, so it will not affect any other you know, transactions because we disable the primary key, but uh, with a rely option. So meaning that trust this primary key even though it is disabled. So this information will be used by logical standby database. So even though primary key has been added but disabled and rely option, uh, it will make uh, your primary key as a trusted information. So your logical standby database will take advantage of this. Okay, so up to this point, I cover the first section of uh, lesson eight. I covered a brief overview of a logical standby database. And also I introduced architecture and also how to prepare logical standby database. Okay, section two uh, from the lesson eight. In the second part of uh, this lesson, uh, I will focus on uh, creation of a logical standby database by using SQL command. Uh, this slide is giving you uh, the overview. To create logical standby database by using SQL command, the first step is create a physical standby database and stop redo apply on the physical standby database. So what I mean is uh, the base uh, database is a physical standby database. So you have to have a physical standby database and then we're gonna uh, stop redo apply service and then prepare the primary database to support 
a logical standby database. In the primary database, you create logical uh, log minor data dictionary in the redo data on the primary and then transition physical to a logical standby database. So uh, if a re uh, when redo that stores log minor dictionary is transported to standby database and if that is applied that is the time when physical standby database is converted to logical standby database. And then you're going to open logical standby database and then you're going to verify the logical standby database uh, uh, if it is uh, properly uh, performing. That's what you have to test. So step number one, create physical standby database. So you have to create physical standby database. Ensure that physical standby database is currently uh, is current with the primary database. That's in a very first step. Uh, as part of a practice activity, you will uh, create physical standby database, which is called the London Two. And then we're gonna check, uh, you know, uh, redo shipping and also redo apply service status, and then eventually we're gonna convert it to a logical standby database. Uh, second step is we're gonna stop redo apply service. At this point, you may have uh, some transactions in the primary database, so your standby database is a little behind now. And then uh, we're going to prepare the primary database to support row transition. So update log archive desk to transport redo to standby database, especially logical standby database. And then in the primary database, you execute DBMS logical standby dot build and this will create and dump large, uh, log minor data dictionary to be used by logical standby database into redo. And this redo will be transported to standby uh, database. So remember that your redo apply service is just stopped at this point. So you have a lot of a redo generation in the primary database and then redo include log minor data dictionary. And then we're going to issue this command, alter database recover to logical standby database. From the time when redo apply service stopped, uh, we have uh, additional redos generated. So that redo will be applied to synchronize a physical standby database. The time when uh, the redo that include the logo miner data dictionary is applied your physical standby database converts to logical standby database. That's by single command. So redo will be applied to recover physical standby database, but the time when redo that, in, that contains logo minor data dictionary applied, your physical standby database will be converted to logical standby database with a DB name. So DB name is different from your primary database. And then you're going to shut down logical standby database instance and restart in mount mode. And then we're going to adjust log archive desk to support row transition service. And then we can open logical standby database result log. And then we can start this time SQL apply service because your database became logical standby database. And then you're going to verify that the archive log files were registered and also you will begin uh, sending redo data to the standby database. So with the SQL command, we have a, a total of seven, seven steps. And also you can create logical standby database 
using Enterprise Manager as well. So when using Enterprise Manager, uh, this will be a little bit simpler. So you can you start Enterprise Manager, and we choose the second option, create a new logical standby database. And then you can also review uh, SQL apply unsupported tables. And then you can also provide all database name and database unique name and also target name, standby archive location. And then finally, you're going to review. So, you know, in this way, you can create logical standby database. So I'm going to actually jump into my demo environment. I will show you how to create logical standby database. And then I will show you uh, Enterprise Manager uh, that give us option to create logical standby database. And during the practice activity time, definitely you will practice. Okay, so I'm in the demo environment. So let's see here, uh, in host 3, I created logical standby database. I cannot logical, currently physical standby database. So I log in as a sysdba. And I will check database role from V$ database. So that's my physical standby database. Okay. And then um, from the primary database, uh, I didn't uh, set log archive desk. for a logical standby database, so I will have to update it. So what I'm going to do, alter system set log archive test to, uh, this is to transport redo to uh, London 2, and I can send it synchronously and also valid for it goes to online log files primary row so if a current database running as a primary I can transfer reader to London 2 London 2 is a physical standby database right now DB unique name it goes to London 2 so I update it. So when I check home oracle setup check logs. So I have a number 27 here. And what about this location? Home oracle setup check logs. So 28 looks like a one uh, more uh, one more login uh, to create it. So 28 here. So as you can see we can transfer redo to a large uh, to the physical standby database in this way. So my database is still physical uh, standby. A physical standby database. What I'm gonna do? I'm gonna stop MRP background process. So when you look at pgrep minus MRP, it's running right now. So even though 2 is missing, that's in uh, London 2. And I will issue alter database recover manage it standby database cancel. Okay. So that's actually uh, the, uh, the way to stop MRP process. So I have a pgrep minus lf mrp process. It should, uh, it's gone now. Now let's take a look at current <coughs> SCN number from v$ database. 
current system change number is 3942137. So that is the current system change number. So as you keep advancing, so over the time it will be updated. Okay. So we have uh, this and we have a uh, this current. Uh, we can also switch logo file here. Alter system switch logo file. And then we can double check my system's change number. So since it is idle, it's still the same. But from here, we should be able to see the next one. So we have a 29. So now at this point, what, what, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to a primary database. I will execute dbms logical standby dot build hit enter so it dump logo miner data dictionary into redo so we have a redo generated after you stop mrp and we also generate redo that include the logo miner data dictionary okay so at this point, I created in, uh, the logo miner data dictionary, and it is shipped over to logical standby database. Does that mean my current database is a physical stand uh, logical standby database? Let's take a look at database row from B dollar database. No, it's still physical standby database. What if you switch logo file from here? So I'm going to issue alter system switch logo file and I will do it a couple of times and I switch it, switch it, switch it and then I will come back here. What is my database role? Still physical standby database. Okay. The time when Oracle convert physical standby database to logical standby database is when issuing this command, alter database, recover to logical standby and new database name. So this is DB unique name, London 2. So I'm going to actually hit enter. Okay, so finally this job is done. So now let's check my database role. Copy, paste. So as you can see here, my database not mounted uh, after do this. So what I have to do is I have to restart database. Uh, before that, I will have to adjust the SGA to accommodate you know, uh, some uh, changes to support logical standby database. So I will issue alter system set memory max target equals to 840 megabytes scope equals to sp file and that's based on our embodiment set memory target equals to 840 megabytes scope equals to sp file and I will shut down database and I will restart mount to state and then I will have to open database reset logs So now I'm going to start database mount to state and then alter database open reset logs and then you're going to say uh, select database underscore row from v dollar database look at this is now logical standby database so now it's good to start logical standby database uh, SQL apply service. Alter database, start logical standby apply immediate. Okay, done. So when you look at pgrep minus lf mrp, there is no mrp process. pgrep minus lf lsp. The logical standby database process is running. So 
you know, this is the way to create uh, the logical standby database. You must have a physical standby database, and this will be converted to logical standby database. Uh, in another demo environment, I will show you Enterprise Manager quickly. So I will uh, prepare for a second demo environment and I will show you. So I will pause this recording and I will come back. Okay, so I moved on to new demo environment. So my Boston database, primary database is ready. And under availability, uh, menu, you have Add Standby Database. And from Add Standby Database, uh, you have an option to choose uh, Database Login. I will go with the Sys user and I will log in. Okay, so depending on the you know, Enterprise Manager, uh, it may not show you options you know, initially. You will have to click Add Standby Database one more time. So it will show you correct page. Now this page is giving you a few options. You can choose a second option. Uh, this is to create logical standby database. So you can move on to next page. So here we have option. We have online backup option to create backup from active database. And also you have option to display unsupported table, unsupported tables. So in our environment, there is no unsupported uh, tables because we didn't uh, create and install um, sample schemas other than OE and HR schema. Uh, so after you confirm this, you move on to next page. And what is the degree of a parallelism? And also, you provide the primary host credentials. And then you will have to provide a standby database name, instance name. I will call it as a London 3. And I will create standby database in host 3. So in this location. And then I will provide you know, a standby host credentials. And then you will also have to provide a listener and standby database file location. You can also customize it if a default path is not appropriate in your environment. And then you can move on to the next page. So you have in a couple of you know, uh, the, the you know, messages. So in this example, I have a space issue, disk volume, because you know, uh, I already have a, a London database, a London 2 database in the same environment, in my demo environment. So uh, in real environment, you can pass to the configuration page and you can find out the review. But in my demo environment, I don't have enough space to create additional uh, standby database. So that's you know, a quick demonstration of uh, Enterprise Manager. Uh, you know, standby database creation, especially logical standby database. Now I'm going to move on, move back to a slide. Okay, so I'm in the slide now. Securing your logical standby database. Uh, unlike a physical standby database, in the logical standby database, you can make changes or you can create objects. But by default, uh, uh, by default, you know, alter database guard, all option is enabled, meaning that you cannot make any changes initially. However, uh, if you want to make, uh, you know, some changes in the logical standby database, you can lower the level, data guard, uh, the data guard level. So alter database guard the standby, it prevents users from making changes to any data maintained by data guard sql apply or you can even lower down to none so uh, you know it is in a normal security option so you can actually uh, view uh, the current data guard status uh, from vdollar database guard status 
So the database guard level is automatically set to all by broker on the logical standby database. And also the database guard level applies to all users except for sys. Even though it's possible to create new objects in the logical standby database, but by default, uh, you cannot. So you have to lower the database guard level. So that's what we have to know. And also we have an automatic deletion of a read log files by SQL apply. After applying read, after uh, consuming uh, redo in the form uh, as a form of a SQL statement, uh, we can retain uh, redo for a certain amount of time. And then after redo is retained for a certain amount of time, and then you can uh, delete the, uh, the archive log file, uh, archive log file coming from primary database. So here's the example. We have uh, uh, logical standby database apply set log auto deletion retention target so you can set retention target so it is used to specify the number of a minute that SQL apply keeps a remote archive log after completely applying its content so after you apply its content how long you want to keep archive log file that was already applied. So that you can choose. And also, you can create SQL apply filter rules. So you can actually uh, you know, skip uh, DML changes to HR schema by creating uh, uh, the rule. So we can skip SQL statement or we can skip errors and continue applying changes we can skip transaction and we can also skip all SQL statements for a container. So that's in our choice by creating a rule. And also, if a rule uh, is not needed anymore, you can delete SQL apply filter rules. So we can use execute DBMS, logical standby, unskip, unskip error, unskip transaction. These are the possible options. So after uh, deleting, and you can also view uh, current settings from DBA, logical, standby, skip. So it will show you uh, the current settings. And also you can create a scheduler job on a logical standby database. It's a role-based scheduler job. So you can create a scheduler job uh, to run it only when database running as a primary or only when the database is running as a logical standby database. So you can create role-based scheduler job by using DBMS scheduler set attribute. Okay, here's a quiz. By default, users are able to create additional indexes and mature views in a logical standby database. The answer is no. You will have to lower the security level to be able to create additional indexes and mature views. And scheduler jobs created on the primary database are replicated to logical standby database, but do not execute by default. So the answer is, uh, the answer is true. Uh, job creation DDL statement is replicated, but scheduler job will be running only based on you know, uh, appropriate role. So the answer is true. This is a second part of lesson eight. Practice 8-1, identifying unsupported objects for logical standby database. In lesson eight, we learned logical standby database. 
In practice 8, we will implement the creation of a logical standby database. In the very beginning, we will identify unsupported objects for logical standby database. You open terminal window for host01 and you log in as a sysdba. And you format the output of a query. We currently have a CDB root container and PDB seed container, which is a read only container for template, and DEP or DEP1 container. And we're going to run a query to find all tables across all PDBs without unique logical identifiers in the primary database. Uh, unlike a physical standby database, the logical standby database is recovered by applying a uh, SQL statement, actually a logical change record. So in order to execute SQL statement to specific row in the, physical, uh, in the logical standby database, we have to have a key or column that provide the uniqueness. So we, we will have to check which tables do not have the column that doesn't guarantee uniqueness. So I will run this query and it takes a, a, you know, a minute or one minute 30, 30 second. Okay, it was pretty quick because we didn't create many of us uh, sample schemas here. So according to this output, all of the tables in our database um, have a, a unique key. So uh, all tables are supported for logical standby database. And also we're going to identify internal schemas that ship with the Oracle database. Any user defined tables created in these schemas will not be replicated on the logical standby database. So that's what we're going to check. And when you run CDB logical standby skip view, and you will see 69 views, like 69 schemas. And these schemas will not be supported in the logical standby database. And then we're going to identify tables that do not belong to internal schema. So you have a tables that doesn't belong uh, that do not belong to 69 internal schemas. However, the tables that will not be maintained because of unsupported data types. Okay, nothing. So none of the tables, okay, have unsupported data types, so which is a good sign. And also, we're going to check column names and data types that conflict with the SQL apply. Okay, nothing. So as you can see, you know, as a part of a creation of a logical standby database, you will have to check few things, whether your primary database can be replicated to a logical standby database. This is practice 8-1. Practice 8-2, creating a logical standby database, temporarily a physical. In order to create logical standby database, we will have to create physical standby database first, and then later on, we convert it to logical standby database. The creation of a physical standby database is exactly the same as a practice 3-2, so we're not going to do the manual tasks um, uh, that were performed uh, in practice 3-2. Instead of that, uh, we will simply execute a script 
uh, to create physical standby database. However, if you are interested in just open home Oracle setup, setup underscore London 2, so it will show you exactly the same steps. You will create directories for London 2, you will create a P file for London 2, you will create password file, and also you will create physical standby database as a preparation. And eventually we will have to convert to logical standby database. That's the next practice activity. So I'm going to execute this script on host 03, enter. So as you can see, task 1 to 3 is pretty quick. Test, uh, task 4 is just starting uh, London 2 database up to normal to state. And at task 5, using RMAN, we will create physical standby database. The final goal is to have a logical standby database from physical. It will take about a minute, so I will pause this recording and I will come back to complete practice 8-2. Okay, so almost done. Okay, here we go. All five tasks complete. Now you have a physical standby database. This is a practice 8-2. Practice 8-3, starting redo transport service and verifying operation. Uh, I'm going to be host 01 and I will log in as a SysDBA. And this is my primary database. And we will uh, configure log archive desk 3. And this parameter setting is to transport redo from primary database to London 2 currently physical standby database. But later on, uh, this will become logical standby database. And we're going to determine last sequence number archived on the primary database. Okay, so in my case, 31. Now I'm going to move on to host 03, but you may have a confusion here. Right now, mostly uh, you opened terminal window on host 03 to access to London database, but this is for London 2. So if you want, you can open new terminal window to avoid confusion. And SSH host 03 and then set environment variable using .raemv and london2. I think this is the best way to avoid confusion. So I will keep one terminal window for, for London and another terminal window for London2. I will log in as a sysdba. I will determine the last sequence number archived and it's a 31. So let's come back here. It's the same number, 31 and 31. And then we're going to switch log file to see the redo, sh uh, redo shipping works correctly from primary to London 2 standby database. So next number should be 32. And London 2 should be able to receive it, 32. So this is in a read transfer service from primary to London 2 database and we verified. This is a practice 8-3. Practice 8-4, converting physical standby database to logical standby database. Um, we have a, a physical standby database which is called the London 2 right now. We want to convert it to a logical standby database. To do so, we will have to stop redo apply service. 
because the read or apply service is not compatible with logical standby database. And then in the primary database, we will have to extract data dictionary to support logical standby database. So we're going to build logo miner dictionary. So you have to be in the primary database. Since the read apply uh, service currently stopped, uh, this logo miner data dictionary will not be applied at this point. Okay, so the reader is generated and reader is transported. But physical standby database is not recovered yet. So in the physical standby database, you will run this command to make it as a logical standby database. The meaning is apply all the changes right before the point you executed the dbms logical standby that build and also uh, after applying this uh, after executing uh, dbms logical standby build the logo miner dictionary is captured in the redo when that redo is applied in the london 2 database the london 2 database becomes logical so you know, this command is to convert from physical to logical. And DB name is also changed to London 2. And also, after, that uh, after this process is done, uh, for better support, we will increase the size of memory max target and memory target. And it is a static parameter. So I will have to restart database. For all of the demonstrations, uh, to uh, simplify in a demonstration, I just copy paste it. But your case. Uh, if we prefer to type, you can just you know feel free to type, but you know uh, you can also uh, copy paste, so you should be able to balance to manage your time. And also uh, after mounting logical standby database, we will review log archive desk. In the current setting. We have a log archive desk one that's a local archive destination. And log archive desk two, uh, this is a re uh, to define remote archive destination. So, so we're not going to use a logical standby database as a new primary database in most of the circumstances. So I will uh, set it to null not to use this destination. So I will run alter system set log archive desk to two. Finally, I will open logical standby database with the reset log option. And I will run LSP process, logical standby, the background process. So here, P grab minus LF, LSP. So we have a logical standby background process. But when you look at LF, uh, MRP, uh, it's only for London. So there's no two here, but actually this, this belong to London too, and this belong to London. And then we're going to open pluggable database in the logical standby database. Okay, so we have a uh, dev1, it's a read write mode. Uh, one thing that we didn't check was this select. 
uh, database row from v dollar database. As you can see, it's a logic standby database. So once you convert this to a logical st standby database successfully, you exit out. And also, I can even close it because I'm not going to touch a London 2 database for the next practice activities. And also, host shader 1, I will exit out of a SQL plus. So I have a host shader 1, host shader 2, host shader 3, host shader 4. So everything is open for the next practice activities. This is a practice 8-4.